Can we get a quick injury update on Philip? Yeah, it, it doesn't look good. Um, uh, it looks like it's going to be several weeks. He's mm -hmm. not one to, to sit on or anything. Um, yeah, so it's so fortunate that he's got it at halftime, but he's been a stalwart back there for us. And Can I ask, was it the shot in the head or the kick in the quad that got him? Uh, I don't know exactly what it was, okay. uh, but but again, he's been he's been awesome for us, and uh, just life and sports, just you know, things happen uh, when, when you least expect it. And, um, but he's got a steely mindset, and the expectation is that he gets back hopefully faster than what the, the, the uh, doctor uh, project. Okay, so you got us to 59 points, which is a new club record, a berth in the Concacaf Champions Cup. I know you're going to say that it takes a village to create success, mm -hmm. but to you and your coaching staff, are you able to take a beat and think about what you've brought, the joy, the ecstasy to this fan base, to this club, the pride? Yeah, I, I really do think it takes a village, and 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 you know, I, I said it after our, our last game in San Jose, where um, our medical staff does a great <laughs> job of of keeping these guys healthy. Um, strength and conditioning staff does a fantastic job of keeping these guys fit and ready to play uh, what is a high intense level of football. Um, communications department with uh, with Trey and, and Delmi do a fantastic job of, of bringing the, um, the superheroes into everyone's uh, living room. Um, you know, Kurt and, and, and the front office and Jason do a great job of, of bringing fantastic players and fantastic people. Um, and last but not least, uh, I, I feel like uh, I've been blessed with a, an unbelievable coaching staff. Um, guys that um, come in every day and, and treat this like their baby. And, and there's never a time where I felt like I care more about this team than they do. And so I, I think, you know, I, I couldn't be more uh, blessed to have such great people around me um, and, and, and create an environment where we're constantly trying to be the best that we can be. And I think the players are the same way. And, and I think that's why we've been able to have the season. Because we're a group of learners. We don't have all the answers. But together, I think we can come up with some great ideas and, and be a great team. Thank you. Uh, you guys had five shots on goal in the first half, no goals. And then the penalty early on there. But then the penalty misses. And favors seemed to kind of go your guys' way. Did you feel like there was like some karma, maybe some kind of Cosmic energy going on there with kind of how things turned your way. Yeah, and out. I think so. I, I think it was like um, there was there was a bit of karma. You know, I thought it was a a soft PK, um, and again, it's something that takes that long to deliberate. There's obviously some second guessing, um, but again, I think the universe took care of that. Um, but what it didn't take care of is us defending a, a, a long throwing. And for as much time as we spent on that, um, and it seems like such a uh, innocent moment in the game, um, but but again, there's balls bouncing around, there's players, and so again, th that's an area that will tighten up because again, you get, getting in the playoffs, you, you don't want to concede uh, on a goal like that. So again, continue to learn, continue to get better in that phase. Speaking of playoffs and kind of going forward now, Chicho, 17 goals in the season, 16 over the first 17 games, I believe, but only one in the last 14. How are you, how do you think you guys can get him going again for playoffs? You know, it's, uh, I, I don't think it's magic. You know, I think some of the things that we've been, uh, you know, chatting about with Chicho um, is just being in, in, in between the two posts and, and getting good delivery. And I think in the first half, he had a, he had a couple good looks um, in the second half as well. And so I think it's just, uh, you're, you're playing the, the percentage game where if, if we find Chicho in dangerous areas, Chicho will finish. And you know tonight, I think the goalkeeper came up big on, on, on the first one. But he's getting in the right spots. He's working his tail, tail off defensively for the group. And it's just a matter of time before. And so if you ask me, um, would I rather him score in this game or just explode in the playoffs, I, I'd, I'd take the latter. Micro, OK. Sorry, I just didn't know where the other mic was. <laughs> um, can you describe? Sort of where you are, your team is at emotionally, where you guys are at, and sort of what you pivot to now. Like, how do you prepare for what's next? <coughs> well, again, for me, it, you know, even though every game is an isolated event, I, I believe there's a lot of learning to take away from every game. Um, and you know, I think tonight was a, a little bit of a 
microcosm of our, of our season where there's really good moments and then there's a moment of adversity and how do you respond, right? We can see the goal where I feel like it was kind of out of the run of play, um, but we bounced back, right? And I think it's just a, a mindset of, of winners and not all things are going to go your way, um, but the most important thing is how do you react as an individual, how do you react as a collective? Um, and, and I think tonight we did that. And I think it's really powerful uh, for a group as far as confidence, as far as belief goes, when you, you're up, you know, you're, you're behind it on the scoreboard, um, but you find a way to win the game. And, and that took some, some really good plays and a bit of fortune as well. But again, you create your fortune by putting the ball in dangerous areas. And, and today, the guys were fantastic. Were there moments you saw on, on the field where that was happening? Were there players? Were there plays? Were there the hustle? Something that, like you said, those small moments that went against you? Were there some of those? the other direction where you saw the resilience coming, even though the goal was Yeah, I mean, there's, I think there's a bunch of small plays that, you know, winning duels, like still pressing the ball uh, when you're down a goal. Like, obviously, you, you want to score, so you got to press well. But it's really easy to go, oh, you know, poor me, we're down a goal, I'm, I'm going to back off off this guy. And then it's a, it's a cascade effect where if we don't get pressure on the ball, then we're just giving them confidence with the ball. And I just felt like we just, as a group, dug in and created a, a quite a few good opportunities from our defensive pressing. Um, and then, you know, Diego makes a great play uh, for the goal. And, and, and again, that doesn't come if you don't believe that you're going to be able to do something like that. And so I, I think you see it in all different phases of the game. Um, and then capitalizing on it, it's almost like we willed that second goal in, you know, getting up there, putting numbers in the box, putting in a good cross, and, and almost willing that goal in. And so I think, again, at this stage of the season, We've got to take all our, all of our experiences that we've had along the way, and it's been a long season. Um, and there's been some individual adversity within the group. There's been some collective adversity with the group, and it's taken all those and not taking those for granted, but but just living on the shoulders of those moments, knowing that they're always there, and we've got to always find a way to overcome them. Any more in English? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Pablo, felicidades. Uh, hablábamos de metas. ¿Sientes que has cumplido o has superado la meta luego de que llegas a un tercer lugar? Eh, competencia internacional. When you talked about goals earlier in the season, do you think you've met those goals by qualifying for the on the track for the international tournament? Um, yo, creo que, yo creo que sí. Uh, uh, hablamos cuando inició el campeonato y la meta fue terminar en los primeros cuatro uh, posiciones en la tabla para poder tener partido en casa en los playoffs, que son muy importantes. Y, y tal vez eh, ganando la posición en el, el, el CONCACAF es, un, es una meta que tuvimos. Y, y yo creo que el, el, la calidad de fútbol me, se mejoró este año. El, los, los puntos, eh, la mentalidad, y ahora tenemos un desafío de frente que queremos salir campeones y sabemos que va, va a tomar mucho, pero yo creo que tenemos el equipo que lo puede lograr. En este tipo. En el inicio de la temporada, hablamos de terminar en el top 4 de la mesa y hemos conseguido un partido de home playoff game, que fue un gran gran para nosotros, pero también la calidad del fútbol, la mentalidad, ha mejorado en general y ahora tenemos el objetivo de ir a la mesa. En este tipo de partidos, donde todos están jugando al mismo tiempo, se están mirando el reloj, se están mirando los resultados, y en todo momento cambiaba. Tú estabas en, en unos momentos de que te estabas en el cuarto lugar, que te enfrentabas a Colorado, te enfrentabas a Houston, te enfrentabas al que venía. ¿Sentías que en algún momento se estaba yendo el resultado que tú estabas buscando? ¿Cómo vivías? So, what decision did all the teams play at the same time? Did you kind of catch yourself wondering what team was in what place and who you were going to play? And did you have a preference? No, para mí siempre es salir a ganar el partido. Porque si te meten en en la mentalidad que si sabemos que este, este equipo está ganando, tenemos que empatar eh, la vida y el fútbol. Nunca sale como pensás. O sea, siempre hay que tener pecho alto, salir a ganar. Eh, y, y eso siempre, así jugamos siempre. Si estamos en casa, si estamos fuera de casa, siempre ganar el partido. Eh, aunque un empate te, te ayuda a mejor, eh, es muy peligroso. Eh, jugar con ese tipo de mentalidad para mí es siempre 
queremos ser agresivos con el balón, sin el balón, queremos, queremos meter muchos tiros al arco, queremos uh, romper las líneas con el balón, o sea, es jugar vertical, pero también saber cuándo uh, mantener el, el, la posición para crear mejores oportunidades. Y yo creo que esta noche los, los chicos lo lograron eso. For me, it's always just going out and winning. I don't. I think it's dangerous to kind of play for a draw or play for whatever result you want. Uh, for them, they want to play aggressive with and without the ball. They want to break lines with the ball. They want to get shots on goal. And tonight, they did that. Uh, Pablo, un partido muy agresivo. Uh, hoy noche, muy físico. Uh, ¿Tienes que hablar con, uh, con los jugadores para mantener la calma en unos momentos? Y, ¿Cómo reaccionaron los jugadores a esos momentos? Sí, yo creo que desde el inicio uh, Vancouver salió a, a pelear. Y este, eh, fue un partido muy lindo para nosotros porque así lo vamos a vivir en los playoffs. Eh, y yo creo que había veces donde podíamos tranquilizar un partido un poco con el balón, pero también la emoción del jugador en esos partidos son muy difíciles porque hay patada. Hay, hay fulles, hay, hay muchas cosas que rompen el, el ritmo del juego. Y yo creo que ese es un tema que vamos a, a, a revisar para saber cómo nos comportamos cuando, cuando el partido se hace bien agresivo y podemos aguantar un poco más el balón, con un poco más paciencia, con un poco más uh, tranquilidad. Pero yo creo que fue un, un muy buen desafío para nuestro grupo, especialmente con el So the question was, Vancouver came out very aggressive. Did you have to at any point talk to the guys about kind of keeping their head in that type of moment? Pablo said Vancouver came out fighting. They came out aggressive. Um, in that moment, you kind of have to keep your cool. But as a player, in these moments when there's fouls or things that are breaking up the game, it's hard to kind of keep calm with the ball, keep possession. That's something that they're going to talk about and focus on. And how to control yourself in these moments that are needed. <laughs> piensas en cuanto al ataque, donde tienes varios jugadores muy talentosos y no puedes tenerles a todos en la cancha en todo, en todo momento. So what do you think about your attack? You have a lot of talented attacking players. How do you think that's going Yo creo que han dicho que es un problema lindo para el entrenador, pero eso también es falso porque hay que manejar las emociones de, de jugadores que, eh, que merecen estar en la cancha. Pero en el fútbol también hay que tener balance. Si tenemos eh, seis jugadores ofensivos, Um, y no tenemos los jugadores que rompen los juegos, que hacen el trabajo defensivo, es, es muy difícil sacar un, un, un resultado. Y yo creo que hemos visto varios partidos con, con los jugadores eh, jugando en, en como si se, eh, eh, la, las relaciones de, de los jugadores. Hoy día vimos el, el Luna al lado derecho pero también lo vimos al lado izquierdo, Diogo como un 10, Diogo como un 10 de, del lado izquierdo, um, Chicho jugó como un, un, un 10 eh, cuando entró el ando, así yo creo que en este momento hay que, hay que preparar el grupo uh, para, para maximizar el, el, nuestro chance para sacar resultados contra Minnesota y desafortunadamente pues, van a haber un, un jugador, dos jugadores que a lo mejor no inician pero para mí el fútbol siempre en 90 minutos. Lo que entran como Messi hoy día. Entró en un partido con 30 minutos y hizo tres goles. O sea, en el fútbol no necesita mucho tiempo. Pero cuando tienes dos minutos hay que, hay que hacer lo máximo para, para el equipo. Y, y eso, eso son cosas que... Eso es el fútbol. Hay, hay muchos equipos en el mundo que no pueden poner, poner los mejores eh, jugadores ofensivos porque no tiene sentido en el sistema pero cuando entran deben marcar la diferencia. So we obviously have a bunch of players that all deserve to play, but it's kind of people say it's a good problem to have. You also have to manage the emotions of those players that maybe do deserve to be starting, but it's what they do with the time. For example, Messi went into the game today with 30 minutes left and scored a hat trick. So it's not about how much time you get, it's about what you do with the time. And you can't just put up your best offensive players all into the lineup because you want people that play your system defensively, offensively, and you have to focus on that. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pablo. Thank you.